Salamat sa pagtanggap ng invitation ko, ha? Alam mo naman, lagi lang ako nandito sa study. Wala ko kausap most of the time habang binabasa ko mga libro dito. Kamusta ka? Kumain ka na ba? Ha? Ah, okay naman ako. Medyo traffic lang. Traffic? Ano yun? Ano yun? Hmm, binabasa mo ngayon tong Lemmy Serab? Ah, oo. Paborito ko tong mga to lately. Tingnan mo, meron ako na itong kulay pula na medyo malaki na hardbound. Tapos, meron ako na ito isa pang set, volume 1 and 2, medyo softbound. Ah, oo. Mas malitong mga kulay blue eh, ano? Oo nga eh. Maganda ito para nadadala ko kahit saan. Lalo na dito sa loob ng study. Handy, isn't it? What about sa labas, sa mga park? Na try mo na magbasa sa mga ganun? Ay, bawal yung ganun alam ko eh. Bawal lumabas sa park para magbasa ng libro. Huhulihin ka ng mga apopis. Ay, ganun ba? Kailan pa naging ganun dito? Natatandaan mo ba? Kailan? No. Bale, nagsimula siya no. Ano pang mga libro na binabasa mo dito? Nagsimula yung libro. Bale. Bawal na po sa sa park. Bawal. Bawal. End program. Record note. It seems madali lang maibalik sa normal itong mga na-recondition. Malakas nga lang yung kapit ng brainwashing. Proceeding to return this specimen sa bahay nila. Twenty twenty one. After the hellish year before it had fizzled down, the fate of the Philippines was literally unknown. What wasn't expected, however, was how the people responded. Unlike the generations of freedom fighters behind them, the people of this age were completely apathetic. These were the reconditioned citizens that were siding with the Viper Queen. They believed that the owl was an enemy of the country and should therefore be eliminated. For some survivors that weren't reconditioned by the government, they resorted to remain alongside the reconditioned. Why fight against the norm? Why change things? Doing this helps them keep safe from the virus and from any sort of crime. This place was already a safe world, even if it's inside a cage built by snakes. The owl once again coming back to the people was no longer a symbol of rebellion or hope. It was just another event that had happened. After December 30, 2020, the country's president, Odette, now known as the Viper Queen, returned back to her home base in Malacanang. She was right. She didn't really need to do anything to push her agenda. The people themselves refused to take arms and rebel. Once this was certain, and her government made sure that it was, the wounds that the owl had inflicted on the vast technologically armed kingdom closed up. Everything just went back to how it was. How Odette, the Viper Queen, wanted it all along. No one goes outside. No church gatherings. No walks in the park. Roads are mostly empty with military trucks cruising along. The entire Philippines was walled by an invisible field. Nothing comes in or out unless permitted by the Apophis. It wasn't a secure kingdom for very long, however. Rumors quickly spread right at the start of the year. People have been living in fear that there were rebel terrorists hiding among them in plain sight. Snatching their children and brainwashing them. 
what they didn't know was it was incredibly more grim than it seemed. The Apophis were secretly selecting children to be abducted and be used as blood bags for super soldier production. The new Apophis soldiers reanimated corpses that heeded every single command given by the Viper Queen. These were programmable zombies, rabid but very precise. The moment the owl reappeared, he had managed to disable the whole electrical grid for a while, helping Brent and his camouflage zeppelin to re-enter the country. The following months after that were them silently invading an area that was once called Quezon City. Not long after, the Viper Queen eventually learned about this invasion. That particular area in Luzon was now known among the Apophis as the Owl's Nest. This was the oasis in a grey kingdom. There would be times that defectors coming from the reconditioned cities would escape here. Most never make it, sadly, unless they had help from the owl himself. There were times that some of the Apophis would try to invade the owl's nest, but every single time such an operation happens, not one Apophis soldier returns back to the Malakanyang. It didn't matter whether or not it was daytime or nighttime. It didn't matter if the attacks were from way up north or south, from all directions at the same time. The owl's nest was completely impenetrable. One afternoon, Denise Lockett was preparing dinner for herself and her son. She was one of the fortunate ones that were saved last year and were on board Brent Castillo's Zeppelin while the whole Philippines changed in just a few days. Her son survived the whole ordeal by hiding. With all that behind them now, Denise felt safe at last inside the owl's nest. Denise, finally done with the cooking, peered through her window to call on her son, Vinny. To her shock, Vinny was at least 40 feet outside of the safe zone of the owl's nest. She was just about to yell out his name when a man in a fox mask snatched him up and ran away. <laughs> 